You are listening to We Can Talk About This, conversations with Jonathan and Krista Threlfall about ideas shaping us and the world we live in. Today, our topic is don't go to church on Sunday. Now, Jonathan's a pastor. He goes to church every Sunday. I'm going to show up this Sunday. Yeah. I have to show up. My absence would be conspicuous. Yeah, yeah. Um, I go to church every Sunday. You do. I do. For you. I do. So why are we saying don't go to church on Sunday? Yeah, it's a very clickbaity sort of title. It you is. came up with it, so it, you should explain it. It indeed. Here, here is how I would explain it. My, don't go to church on Sunday. If if you feel like that is the height of your spiritual life and your spiritual worship. Now we're we're gonna we're gonna clarify. I, I, I'm gonna push back. That's okay. Because you know I I I feel Please uncomfortable do. with that thesis mm -hmm. because I can, I, I can I just say something? Yeah, yeah, of course. I feel uncomfortable with it too. <laughs> <laughs> we both feel uncomfortable with the way we're putting it. But, but but I think but we'll explain. So being with us. So I I think that what you're getting at, and I think what the title of this podcast episode is getting at, is that you shouldn't feel simply by being present in a church gathering that that somehow checking off some spiritual list. I'm a good spiritual person because I showed up in a church building on a Sunday morning. That's mm -hmm. what you're saying, That's right? That's exactly right. But I would be quick to add that I'd rather people be present in the gathering of a church, even if, now, now this, you may push back a bit against this a little bit, but even if they are doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I could say, but I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not you know, <laughs> because no, no, <laughs> because it's better, I think, for a person, even when their heart isn't in it, to be at least in an environment where they might hear truth and be around people who can show them truth and love and clarity. Then it would be that then for them to be completely absent mm -hmm. and to get into that habit. I agree. Okay, good. Good. I agree with that. Then you're then then you're agreeing with the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so James, James talks a lot about in the New Testament. Yes. About hearing the word but not just hearing it. Mm -hmm. Don't just be a hearer of the word but be a doer. Okay. Why? Because the person who hears the word and doesn't do it, doesn't obey it, they're deceiving themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's when he makes the similarity between looking in a mirror seeing yourself and not not doing anything to change yeah um and so that that's that is why i feel like don't go to church on sunday Th there are so many dangers okay one is you you and we're going to talk about the dangers yeah. we're going to talk about why how how you should approach church mm -hmm. and then some practical ways to okay. do that okay so here here's one of the dangers just what i mentioned yeah. you you go to church and you hear things and you become so familiar with the truth that you start thinking you're obeying it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Deceiving your heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a danger. Yeah. But isn't that a danger for anybody that attends church like all the time? Right? Yeah. Wait. Yeah. What did I say? You didn't say that it wasn't. I'm just saying, like, okay, so that's a danger for me. Yeah. As one who's preparing the sermons, that's a danger for you as yeah. one that hears the sermons. Yeah. So then. Uh, why go to church then if there's such a danger of that? Because I've I've heard people tell me, and I I had an answer for them, but but in pushing back against or just asking for clarity here, that have said, well, I'm if I went to church this morning, I would be adding to the number of hypocrites in the church. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stay home from church mm -hmm. because I don't want there to be more hypocrites in church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you, what do you say? I want to know what you said. What okay. you would say? Well, I already know what you said. <laughs> you say go to church anyway, and they're kind of your hypocrisy. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Is that what you would say too? Well, yeah, but I think the the thing is, is it's not like okay, well then, don't go to church. It's don't go to church, assuming that your presence there means your spiritual wellness. Right. Right. Equating presence and attendance at church with the spiritual heights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or with being a good Christian. Yeah. So don't don't go to church assuming that just because your body is in the pew or on the chair or in the bleachers or whatever mat mm -hmm. um, you're sitting on, that that now you are a good Christian. Yeah. yeah. Because 
it's not about just checking off the church attendance box. Yeah. So I think this kind of goes back to some a, a feature of the human heart that always turns um, uh, rituals, which a church attendance is a ritual. Mm -hmm. Like just just honestly speaking, it is a religious observance. Mm -hmm. But it's a religious observance, which for the Christian ought to flow out of one's relationship with Jesus instead of being something that is adding to a stockpile of spiritual credit. Yeah. And it is the, a feature of the human heart to always turn those kinds of observances into something that uh, boosts up my moral status, either in my eyes or in the eyes of others. And so there is a great danger there, I think, for everybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's why religion, which... Christianity. I think that the whole idea of saying it's it's not, it's a relationship, not a religion. I get what people are saying by that. But the human being, humans are intrinsically religious in that we want to give outward expression to our relationship, whatever relationship we conceive of having between us and and the powers that be or the uh, the a higher power. But we always try to turn those observances into something that divides us from other people, something mm -hmm. that sets us above, something yeah. that makes us feel good about ourselves. And church attendance is probably the primary one because it's the most uh, observable one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a great danger there. It reminds me of what Jesus said when he's talking to these people that he had done miracles and taught in their cities. And he said that it was gonna be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than it would be for those cities because yes. they had more light, they had more access to information. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think that's a good, point i think that's what you're you're saying is that that person sitting in the pew or in the chair sunday after sunday hearing sermon after sermon singing song after song mm -hmm. that should be changing their hearts and if it's not then they're putting themselves in a really dangerous position mm -hmm. yeah yeah another thing is that church is not just something you do mm -hmm. it's who you are church is not something just an event you attend it's it's who you're called to be it's 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 who you're called to be in relationship with other people. That's right. right. Yeah. 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 And we're in relationship to Christ. Yeah. And so we, as we're talking about this, thought of Paul's words in Ephesians. Yeah. You want to read those? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so this is from Ephesians 4. And um, Paul is, I'll, I'll, this is verse uh, 15. He says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. So that you're talking about the relationship with Jesus Christ as it informs our involvement in a church. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the idea of the church as a, as a body. Yeah. Uh, elsewhere, Paul talks about the church as a building mm -hmm. and as a family. Well, Body, church, body, building, family. Mm -hmm. What do all of those things have in common? They're all interconnected. Yeah, right. And and one one part can't act a certain way without it affecting another part. Right. Yeah. And that's that's a picture of what the church is and mm -hmm. and what the church is supposed to be. Yeah. So if if you are just going to church on Sunday, going to it, treating it as an event without letting people know you and getting to know other people, not just the people you like, not just the people you've known for years, not the people who sit around you, but like, but the new people, the visitors, yeah. the the people that God is, has brought into that assembly, then, then that's not actually what the church is supposed to be. Right. Yeah. I think if this is something that's very near to my heart yeah. as a pastor, and I hope it would be if I weren't a pastor too, but I think it is because I think about it so much more yeah. every single Sunday. And when, if I, if there's one thing that I wish people would understand about the church is, is what you just said, mm -hmm. and that it's not an event and it's not a building. In fact, the event of the gathering is a little bit like a family dinner when people gather around the table. And it's not family dinner if you don't know everybody, mm -hmm. if you don't know, if you're not connected with those people that you're sitting down. It's like the, it's like the pinnacle of the week in terms of relationally what's been going on. You come together and uh, people that think that they're somehow involved in the church simply because they attend on Sunday morning, I think they lose a great part of the joy. Uh, when they sing, for example. Okay, so one of the things the New Testament says a church should do is sing together. Mm -hmm. Well. What happens when you look around the 
congregation and you see uh, Mrs. So-and-so and, and, and Mr. So-and-so and this teenager and this young person or this child over here, and you know some of the heartache that they've been experiencing. Mm -hmm. You know the sickness that they came through, or you know um, they're on hospice right now. They made it out of church. This is happening in our church. And yet they're singing these songs. Like, for example, what is our only hope in life and death? Christ alone. Mm -hmm. Like, for her to be singing that, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. For him to be singing that, that's incredible, mm -hmm. right? If you don't know those people, you lose out on all of that. You you have no idea yeah. because you are you don't know those people individually. So even the gathering, even the singing part is just like sanded down, flattened, and, and just made uh, uh, just boring. If not for the fact that you know who these people are who are singing together. It's not just the words that are being sung. It's not just the music, but it's the people that are singing those together. Yeah. Yeah, another another way that this shows the gospel at work is that um, the the thing that unites us as a church is is Christ. Yes, it's not it's not our race, our our gender, our political viewpoints, yeah. our socioeconomic status. It's it's not those things. It's supposed to be Christ, and the way that that is put on display is when there are differences. Yes. And yet we're working towards unity. Yeah. And even even harder when there are disagreements and and conflicts. And when people hurt you yeah. and you hurt other people and you have to ask for forgiveness and extend forgiveness. That's that's the messy, yeah, messy part of church, the hard part of yeah. church. Um, is that that's where it's easier to just go to church on Sunday, yeah. slip in, slip out, and like not really interact with people. Yeah. But but it's when you press into those relationships and, and allow yourself to be vulnerable and really ask probing questions of others that the glories of Christ and the gospel are put on display Beautiful. because we're yeah. uniting around something other than ourselves and our preferences we're right. reunite, uniting around the gospel yeah, that's good that's very good no longer greek or jew slave or free but christ is all and in all that's right yeah i think that it, that's so good i'm uh, you put it so well there and it's often the point of disagreement or the point of conflict that people stop yeah and the people give up mm -hmm. but it's at that point that they were about to receive the benefit of the church mm -hmm. and that is there's someone there's something that that person can contribute to my enjoyment of Jesus. Yeah. And apparently there's something in my life, whether or not they're right or wrong, it's beside the point mm -hmm. in, in, when it comes to this conflict, but there's something in my life that needs to be shaped in a different direction, mm -hmm. refined in a certain way that can happen only through the interaction. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what Ephesians 4 is talking about. It says, as each part does its work, yeah. right? So it's, you walk into this church building, or you walk into this gathering of believers, and, and you have no idea that there's this person over here that has something in their life that you need yeah. and there's something in your life some some aspect of your walk with jesus of your enjoying with jesus that they need mm -hmm. how can that happen when you have independent people sitting in pews who never interact with each other answer it can't it yeah. simply can't um so th yeah those are a couple losses you lose um the the, the check the danger of the checklist mentality mm -hmm. but also the loss of the the beauty of the interacting body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And what you were just talking about, that's straight from Paul's analogy of the church as a body. Yeah. That like the hand can't say to the foot, like, I don't need you. Or like the unseemly part to what, what seems to have a, a part of with more value and more honor um, can't say to each other, well, like, I don't need you. And that's the same with the church. Yeah. That the, the person that you might think you need the the least or you just rather maybe they relocate yeah <laughs> um, no they're there for a reason yeah and you need them and they need you um yeah. and that is that's who we're supposed to be that is the mindset we're supposed to have and even dipping back into the episode we did on how to talk with people you disagree with mm -hmm. the approach with that has to be humility yeah you can't approach if, if you approach a disagreement thinking that you're right <laughs> it's mm. not going to help anybody yeah yeah and maybe maybe you are right but but you have to approach it with humility yeah like there's something i need from you yeah that's yeah yeah so this is actually 
an incredibly up-to-date topic. Yeah. Just this morning, I was looking at some comments, some feedback on an article I had or a, a, an opinion piece I had submitted to our local newspaper. And, it, it, and the, the piece was basically encouraging people to be at church. Mm -hmm. And someone had commented and said, uh, I read my Bible, I listen to Christian music, um, I, I try to live like Jesus, and I've given up on church 20 years ago. And um, so what it made me think of is, if you say you love Jesus so much, then why don't you love his bride, mm -hmm. his body? Yeah. Why don't you love what he loves? The mark of someone who loves Jesus is loving what he loves. Mm -hmm. And he loves the church so much that he gave himself for it. Mm -hmm. So it you can't divide the two. Like people... People like this, the idea to, that they're spiritual but not religious, or they're Christian but not part of a church, but there's no such a thing. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing. Now, as soon as I say that, I also want to say it's understandable that people have been hurt by the church because as soon as you get to the church and talk about, you're talking about people and you're talking about sinners because Christ doesn't save anybody other, any other kind of person. So you're talking about people with a great potential of hurting you. In fact, you're talking about people with the potential for organizing themselves in such a way that there is like uh, just rot built into the structure. Yeah. So it's always a possibility. But that should never cause someone to permanently say, I'm done with the church. Because if you're saying I'm done with the church, you're saying I'm done with what Jesus loves. Mm -hmm. and that does not, that's not what it means to love Jesus. So I, it could be that the person who wrote that is listening to this. I don't know. I don't know if anybody um, who, who would think that way is listening to this. But if, if that is the way you think, I would just urge you to consider what does Jesus love and to think about uh, the, the fact that he does love the church. He gave himself for it. Mm -hmm. Well, I know there's someone listening to this that thinks that way because I'm right here. <laughs> and I, I think it's hard to, that's, that's what makes it hard to go to church is that it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to open yeah. yourself up to other people. Yeah. Um, and that, that takes work yeah. and openness and it's scary. Yeah. And there's there is the potential of being hurt and there's like the very high probability of being hurt. Yeah. We've been hurt. Yeah. And we have hurt right. other yeah. people. It's very humbling to think about. Yeah. yeah. And and we don't we don't want to hurt other people. We want to extend forgiveness when other yeah. people hurt us. But that again points us to our need for the gospel. Right. That's what are we rallying around? Are we are we rallying around a group of people who have never hurt us and whom we've never hurt? No, we're rallying around Christ who offers forgiveness even when we do hurt others yeah. and who offers healing when we've been hurt by others. Yeah. And and to the God who can take broken relationships and bring healing yeah. to them. Um and and so that Again, it just highlights our need for Christ and our need for the gospel, our need, our continual need for the word yeah. to have our our values and minds and affections and habits shaped by not what we feel, but by what God says. Yeah, that's good. And I think this highlights for me an important theological theme, and that is the effect of the work of Christ yeah. was not just to bring individuals to salvation, not just to reconcile God and me. But, and this is a major theme in Ephesians, but in reconciling God and me, then to open up the possibility for there to be reconciliation between me and all kinds of other people. Mm -hmm. Because now the, the barriers dividing human beings is no longer uh, the barrier of race or of, of gender or of economic status, like you just said. Because Christ is in all, is all and in all. Mm -hmm. Like Christ is in you as he is in me. Mm -hmm. And part of, as a pastor, part of preaching to people and encouraging people is unfolding to them the riches of what it means that Christ is in them, Yeah, which yeah. brings about unity. If Christ is in you, then your identity is deeper than just who you are. It's found in Christ, which means that you can humble yourself and say sorry, that you can extend forgiveness to other people. And that is what goes on in the church, which goes back to our main thesis here is that you can't get that just by sitting in a pew on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I say, I want to say one more thing about the role of baptism in this. because no, sorry. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> I will anyway. Uh, that w one of the things that baptism signifies when someone's immersed into water, mm -hmm. it not only shows that they're identifying with Christ in His death and burial and resurrection, raised 
you know, buried in the likeness of death and raised in the mm -hmm. likeness of resurrection. But also, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 12, that we're baptized into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yep. Referring to the church. So we're, we're immersed into this new family. And and the picture, the, the entry picture of salvation, which is baptism, also pictures our immersion into the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So we talked about don't go to church on Sunday assuming that that's the height of your spirituality mm -hmm. don't go to church on sunday assuming that it's just an event you attend rather than who you are yeah um but let's go into how how do you how do you do this how do you attend church and be a part of a church in in a good way in a way that resembles what paul talks about the body the family the building so I, I know we're going to get to practical things, yeah. but my very first answer to that question is, first of all, be absolutely crystal clear about what the church is. Mm -hmm. Because if you go into it thinking, this is some place where I'm going to find friends. I'm going to find people who like me. Yeah. I'm going to find people who are like me. Mm. I'm going to find an opportunity for my talents to be on display. Mm. <laughs> if you Every time you think about church, think about... Jesus body and the parts of his body being other people that I'm connected with mm. and that the thing that connects us is the good news that Jesus saves that has yeah. to be primary because otherwise yeah. it's gonna be like well the good the, the church is all about the fact that I'm involved mm -hmm. I'm here right mm -hmm. so here I am uh or someone church is like about me. Yeah. people who like me yeah church about people who like me church about my opportunity to show something or to be something no you have to you have to get this in your mind and remind yourself over and over and over again that church, the, the the pulsating center of church is the good news that Jesus saves. Yes. So that's the first, that would be the first step, mm. right? Yeah. And and then some other practical things. I mean, what do you think? Okay. Here's the first thing that comes to my mind is um, stay after church. I was going to say the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay, but uh, oh, wait, use the word church. I know. Not quite I, the correct way. Stay after the, the worship. Stay after the, the organized service. worship service. Yeah, yeah. right. Right. Um, and and talk with people. Yeah. And talk with people you don't normally talk with. Like maybe maybe make it your goal um, either before or after the service to just find one person that you don't either you don't know or you don't normally talk with. And just talk with them. Okay. Now, that sounds really scary to me. I'm going to put myself into the shoes of someone who has no, a doesn't. social anxiety. No, no, no. I'm going to put myself into the shoes of someone who has social anxiety. No, but because you... <laughs> uh, Because just yesterday, I talked with a lady, and she said she came up to me, and she started talking with me, and she said, just the fact that we're having this conversation was a huge battle. For, like, for me to have the courage to come up and talk to you, I, I had a lot of anxiety about it. So, that's what this lady said. That's what this lady right. said, yeah. And of course, I'm snarling and drooling and growling at her, you know, no. just being really intimidating. You're very unapproachable. <laughs> but but there are people that have like intense social anxiety. Uh -huh. So they're hearing what you just said. Every Sunday, I have to meet someone, introduce myself to, myself to someone who I don't know. Mm -hmm. You still going to insist on that? No, of course not. No. Oh. I'm just suggesting it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not going to go check <laughs> up on people. <laughs> Just saying. I'm just oh, giving okay. an idea. That was just advice. Okay, you don't have to do it. Of course. I could just sit in my pew. You, but there's got to be something. You don't even have to sit in your pew. I mean, you don't even have to come. So let's start there. You don't even have to. Okay. So, but assuming you're listening, assuming you've made it this far. Okay. There is potentially something that you're like, yeah, I want to, I want to actually get to know people. I want to do more than just check off the church box. Right. Um, and one way to do that is to extend yourself yeah. to others. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Stay I, after the service. Yeah. Stay after the service. Or come come early yeah. or stay late. You could pick one. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. could do both. Um, and we know it's hard with kids. We know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's something that. I talk with our kids about as mm -hmm. well is like encouraging them to talk with people whom they don't know. Yeah. Um, so it's something that the whole family can be involved right. with. Yeah. I'll add something to do that. And that is 
almost every church that I know of has some way to break down their gatherings in smaller segments than the main worship service mm -hmm. that happens on Sunday morning. And those are the gatherings in which you could actually have conversations in which not only you know what's going on, but you are known. Someone else knows you. And I think it is incredibly important that someone knows your story. Mm -hmm. That's Someone has to know your story in order for you to be growing and to have some degree of accountability. And by your story, I mean, where, where have you been in your life? What Has your marriage come through a rough patch? Is it in a rough patch? Are you have children with disabilities or with some sort of a, a, a mental or a disorder? Do you have a, a physical injury in your past? Is there something at some point you have- Spiritual struggles. Yeah, spiritual right. struggles. You At some point there has to be a level of vulnerability in which at least someone knows what you've been through and where you are in going th in navigating through that mm -hmm. otherwise you're just you're just a a face without a story mm -hmm. and you have to be a face with a story mm -hmm. and and other, there has to be when you come into that gathering there's someone who knows you and they can ask you about how you're doing mm -hmm. and and you can open up to them but that can't happen again in that just main structured gathering so my my advice is to look at the church's calendar, look at their events and find, is there a midweek prayer, prayer meeting? Is there a, a Sunday morning Bible study? Is there a ladies group or men's group? Because it's in those smaller settings then that you the relationships can be fostered and then that leads to deeper relationships and it just kind of has a, a spreading effect. Yeah, where someone else knows your story yeah. and your struggles and you know someone else's. It's not, all, it's not all about you airing all of your junk to other yeah. people without also putting in the effort to know someone else. Yeah. Um, another piece of advice is, is to proactively look for ways to get with people outside of church sponsored activities mm -hmm. yeah. so, outside of yeah. the church calendar. Like I love what you said about looking at like the smaller gathering, yeah. but outside of that, um, look for ways. Can you, invite someone out for coffee or for a walk or to your home for a meal yeah. or to a restaurant after right. the service. And the the thing is, is like, if you want this, you can have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can, you can work for it. Like sometimes I, I see this in my, I self, myself, someone will suggest something and I'm like, oh, that won't work. That won't work either. That won't work for me. No, nope, none of these work for me. Well, but, but you can find something yeah. that works for you. Yeah. Call someone on the phone. Um, and, and just seek to build relationships with people outside of just what's on the church calendar. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for someone to invite you. Yeah. Because honestly, it might never never happen. Yeah. You, you're stepping in and you just, you do the work. You put yourself out there. That, that means that there will be times you get rejected. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> but, like, but, but that's okay. Yeah. Because sometimes here's what I think I'll, I'll reach out to people and I'm like, even if they can't come, it always feels nice to be asked. Mm -hmm. Um, even if they can't like, to, I, it always feels nice. Like it's nice to like have the option of, Oh, I can't get, get with you for coffee, but thanks for asking. Yeah. So just putting yourself out there in love yeah, and just trust God with the yeses and nos. Yeah. That's good. I'm, I'm thinking now of the person who feels like they don't really want to get involved like they're kind of happy to just sit there and leave. And you made that maybe you, um, Krista referred to people that like have a kind of a longing to be invited and to be in on something. But I know for some people they're like, I don't really want that. Um, I, I think you have to recognize that you need it. Mm -hmm. It's not, this is not just like a luxury for really social butterflies. There's some part of you that is genuinely incomplete mm -hmm. without the interaction with your fellow Christians. You need more of Jesus mm -hmm. and you get it through his people. And so if you have this mindset that, yeah, I'm cool. You know, I just, I kind of like to keep myself um, that they, they, you have to, you actually have to change your thinking about it. There's no other way to put it. You have to change your thinking about that because yeah. there's, there's some, there's some aspect of Jesus that you're not enjoying, not experiencing without the fellowship of, of his people. Mm -hmm. Super encouraging uh, story. Um, several years ago, I was sitting in Sunday school with an older couple who has been coming to our church for years. Um, not members and afterwards the, the Sunday school time is about the church and what the church is and afterwards they and I were talking about it and they said that they felt really guilty because they've been coming to the church for years they've never joined 
and they don't really know anyone there. Mm. And they realized that was their fault mm. because they just kind of slip in and out and they never have extended themselves. Yeah. And part of that, like they live a bit further away and, but it just takes work. And it was so encouraging to me because that was the word of God and mm. the spirit of God working in their hearts yeah. to show them. And their, their response was not, so why hasn't the church mm. <laughs> reached out to us? Their, their response was, this is, this is our fault and, and we want to change in this. Yeah. And that was just encouraging to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, I'll say also this for people that kind of pull back from getting involved. And one of the reasons, and this may be yours, is that there are things that you feel deeply ashamed of. Mm. There's a lot. You, you feel like if someone knows my story, they're going to find something that out. And you just carry the sense of shame for something in your past or something in your present. Or sometimes it's even physical shame. Mm. Like there's something about your body you don't want people to see. Mm. You just you just feel ugly, or you feel you feel like really conspicuous. Yeah. And I wish that our churches, I wish that my church had more of a open arm, uh, just open arms to people that feel that sense of shame, mm -hmm. and that people that feel that would realize this is the place for me mm -hmm. because Jesus did come for people like me mm -hmm. and everyone else has not only their own shame and guilt, but so much that Jesus had to die for it. And yes. that's what unites us. Yeah. And so if we could not let shame like separate us out and create these sort of invisible barriers between the people that manage to make themselves look okay, that they feel good showing up at church and those that just don't feel really worth it. Really worth it. No, no, no. We're all invited. Yes. We're all invited. So, so don't let anything keep you away. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that, again, it is the good news that Jesus saves yes. that, that invites people like that in. Yeah, yeah. It's not about keeping, church attendance is not about keeping up an image no. um, because the only image that we want to uphold is Christ. That's right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. So don't go to church on Sunday. <laughs> but go to church on go Sunday. Church. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. You will find resources at wecantalkaboutthispodcast.com. And uh, we'll post some more things there and hope to see you next time.